Hello everybody, my name is Al, I'm from Cyberlab and today I will show how we can sync or do a synchronize for all your data from your computer to another computer or from your computer to your server. This way if you have any problem with uh, the data in your computer you know that you're gonna have a backup in another place, kind of backup because it's not properly backup. The problem that we're gonna show it's called SyncFink. And then you're gonna ask Al, why I want to know how to do a sync between two computers and it's quite easy and simple. I will give example my case. I have all my videos in my computer. Of course, after I finish it to do all the edition, I make a copy and save in my server. Anyway, I create a copy in my server when I'm using or doing my job. But one time I didn't do it. Basically, I have all my data in my computer and then I started to modify some things and delete the other things that I think that was not important. But then it's covered that it was quite important and I didn't do the backup or I didn't copy everything over. And it's quite easy to forget to copy. This reason that SyncFink it's come true. It's good because they will do a live synchronization between your computer to your server or anything that you want to servers and this way you can generate different revisions. You can keep uh, two, three, four, five revisions of the same data and you can recover it in the case that you delete. If in that time I had the sync thing, I could just open the sync thing and recover my data. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show, but first of all, don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel and let's see how we can do it. So first thing, SyncFing is a continuous file synchronization program. It synchronizes files between two or more computers in real time. Safely protect, so exactly that we want, one synchronize files for one to another. So we go a little bit down, they say that it's private, secure, it's open source, so you can see the source code and check if it's safe or not. And uh, they say that's powerful, portable and simple, and here's the view or at least what you can have. So have this one in mind, we can come here in download and look which revisions that we can have. If you want to use in Android, you can download this program. If you want to use in any other system, so Linux, Windows, Mac, FreeBS, OpenBS, Net, Dragonfly and others will work same thing. But in our case, we're not gonna install directly our Linux because we want to use a container. Why container? Because I can locate any file that I want and if I want to close this container and create a new one, it's super easy, it's only delete the container. So we're gonna do this way. The image that we're gonna install will be this one, Linux server sync thing and uh, has been updated three days ago and they have over 100 million downloads. So it's quite safe and lots of people is trying. Another thing is from Linux server, so should be safe, secure as well. If we start to look a little bit more for the information, we go down, 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 and here in the architecture, you know that have uh, basically all the architecture available. You have 8664 bits, ARMs, and ARM HF, so we have a uh, lot of different revision. You can install in a Raspberry Pi, you can install in a 64 bits, and other computers that you want. So they say, note, please put password to be protected, as a standard, they will not have any password, it will be zero. And if you want to put a password, you can go in actions, settings, and you set up your password. So we have two options to install this program. The first one is the Docker Compose, and the second one is Docker Click. In our case, we're gonna run the Docker Compose, so we'll copy this information, and that's, uh, I will go to the parameters to understand a little bit more about it. In the parameters, if we look here, we're gonna use the port uh, 8384 to use the app web UI and have uh, different ports that it's uh, standard from the application. But remember, if you want to have external access for this thing, yes, you're gonna need to open those ports in your router, but because we are looking for local with uh, two machines in the same network, I don't need you to open those ports, depend what your utilization. Other thing, if you look, my UID and GID, it's a group ID and a user ID. This information can find directly in uh, your putty or any other way. If you check others of my previous videos, you know how to locate this information. Then we're gonna put our time zone and have a few folders that you need to do. First one, it's configuration and the data, you can define any data that you want. If you want to sync all your data for your computer, you go only the main route or the root 
from the file. If you want it to be on one specific, you can put that specific file here. So here now we can create this stack. So I come here in my pull retainer, have two machines or two portainers open, one end with 53, another 54. One have a lot of stocks, other don't have anything at all, but we come here and put add a stock. So we'll pass this information and only copy it because it's easy for me. The host name we're gonna change, we're gonna put uh, Sauber Lab one PID PJD. In my case, it's a uh, thousand and a hundred, so we we'll leave it this way. Other thing, my time zone is this one. The path is already safe here, so I will come here and other thing, I will create another folder called data and will be in data one and it will be exactly the same path as previous. So, it will be my share folder inside it's a sync finger folder plus my configuration the same thing for both if you don't know how to discover your folder or your upload path for your share folder we're gonna show when i do this configuration so keep there and you're gonna understand soon so i can close this one and i can come here and deploy the stack all the parts live exactly the same way all the configuration live the same exactly the same way so now i can come here and go in sync thing they are running, so I can open this one and put in the log. I can log the Napier in Yahoo. If I go down, you have all the information running. So now let's open this one. I'll put port 8384 and I open it. First time that open, there will appear this information that's uh, uh, about report platform. We need to accept it, no option to say no. And now they say that's danger if you don't have authentication. I'll put OK because I don't see the point to put password principally because it's safe, it's my house that I'm doing, and I will delete this uh, this container after. So I come here in settings, here instead I have my machine name, here they will have what's the minimum space or free space in order to block or stop to sync, my API key, the version that I'm using, and uh, that's it. I can configure some default folder, look like all my default folder will be inside the configuration. I can define my sharings, file, versions and other things but we're gonna arrive soon in it here in GUI we can uh, add our user and our password i will not uh, put it but uh, it's good you to add a password and user basically because it makes safe that the others will not be able to access it if you don't allow it connection you can leave the default connection if you wanted to block some ports or anything you can add here other thing it's the speed that you will have the traffic so let's limit it for five megabytes to download, five megabytes of upload. I, you ask why I want to limit it? Because maybe you can oversaturate your network if you don't do it. Imagine that you move files a lot of times, you copy things, you pass things, and that's in that exactly situation that they start to sync. If you decide to get full speed, the rest of your network is unusable because it will use basically your network speed. Now ignore files, if you want to add some ignore files, you cannot do anything at this stage because you don't have any configuration, any share at this point. The same thing for both and I'll put save. Now they create this first configuration, we're gonna create a new share folder. We'll get add folder, great. What we can do now, we need to create another remote, but in order to create a new remote, you need to have another machine with same thing, otherwise they will not uh, sync anything. So here, I will come add stock, I will copy exactly the same that we did last time. And now I start to change, so it will be Cyberlab 2. I already I added the name of my container, to be sure. My machine, I change here, and now it's the volume. Remember that I told that you need to discover the volume? Yes, you come here. So now that you're here, you come here in your share folders, storage, share folders, and here it's your absolute path. So we copy it, go back to my portainer, and here I will start to do the configuration. So we'll put this folder, slash. So I will do exactly the similar path, my absolute path, sync thing configuration, and here I will create a folder called data. Data. And leave exactly the same configuration that I leave the previous configuration. And then I leave exactly the same for the rest, and I put deploy the stack. After you finish your deploy the stack, you can come here in your stack and put in the name and that's bring you to do the container. In the container, you can come in log, 
and here it's all the information and did appear error. So we can access this one as well. We're gonna put 883. So now we're gonna access the part 8384. They appear exactly the same information as before. Put OK, OK, and settings. Will be exactly the same configuration. Cyber Lab, GUI, connections, and continue on. Now we need to connect this machine to this machine. How we can do it? We can come here, actions, show QR code. I copy this information, come here, add a new machine, and I pass it. And here I put the device name and I put save. Now they will try to connect it. They will take a little bit until they have all the configuration. Now we're gonna create a new folder. So put add folder. I can select wherever I want, but I will put in a data one and this folder. Sharing, I already want to share with CyberLab 2 versions, everything else we're gonna show later, and I put save. Now do will update. So if I open here, they already show everything. So now I will come my pictures and copy some pictures here. Now I start to copy. And once that finishes to copy, they will show how much data I have. Now they tell that I have 444 uh, megabytes of data. I have my both servers have my CyberLab 1 that's connected to my server CyberLab 2 that we already configured and I have my CyberLab 2 connect to my CyberLab 1. So only thing that you need to do it's always get the QR code. You can either use your phone to scan this QR code and that's sync in your computer and that you add. Sometimes it will take a little bit longer. This time take a little bit longer more than expect. And here I have my default. I have all my files that I already created. So if I come here my server 2 and come here I can modify it and I can put to share or not. I can create a password, but this one is the file versions that you will want to pay attention. In this file version, I have a lot of ways to do a kind of backup or kind of versions. I can trash file, I can simple, I can struggling, I can extend. But in this case, it will go for simple. If you're not sure which revision, which option that's fit better for a need, don't worry, I can come here and help and that they will show all the options that you have. So you can come here, file system, and they will explain how they do and what's the way that will uh, guarantee that your data is safe. So here it's looking, all the information. Let's go back here and get the simple one because it's the easiest one. So I come here and I put for seven days and put the quantum of copies at least 50. I can create some extra path when they will keep all this uh, data to be stored and that uh, clean up will be each hour to check if it's uh, anything not important. So come here and put save. Other thing that's interesting to do, principally depending how much data you transfer, it's uh, they will only sync each hour. If you need that they sync a little bit less, of course they will use more power for your system, but you can come here in advance and change the time or the period. So let's put each two seconds. I know that's crazy, but each two seconds they will resync the system. And the same thing that I will put for my default, each two seconds they will resync my system. So all the data that will be here will be in the other server and vice versa. So let's get uh, two seconds as well in this one. So I come here and I have this data. Let's open this folder here. So here inside my same thing, exactly the same folder, I have this copy. Let's create a few copies of this video. And that I come here and uh, the red refresh it. And if you come here in my server one, the red refresh and copy. So they, they was really quick to get all the data. So let's get a little something a little bit more heavy. Two gigabytes, they will take a little bit longer to transfer, but uh, let's see how they will work. So here they don't have a limitation in both servers. And that's uh, once that they finish each copy, we're gonna see that they will update here. And the red start to scan and complete to scan. So now, because they already finished to scan, the scan will take a little bit longer to scan this data. And once that's complete, they will start to, to transmit from one server to another. And that's uh, all the data is here. But supposedly that uh, I was playing around, I have my data here and I decided to delete all of those. Like me, that I did uh, file versions. So if I come here, Resync, they have only two gigabytes. If I get five versions, they'll take some seconds because they're still syncing. So let's wait to finish sync. 
So I end up stopping the sync because it was taking too long and that was not the point. So here, what I did as well, I delete all the data that is here. And if I look here, don't have anything, but here in file revision, appear the revisions that I have. Suppose that I, I delete that data and say, oh, I shouldn't delete it. So I can come here in my other server that I allowed the history. I put version and I put it to hey star, hey star, this date that I delete and put hey star. Yes, I want to restore. We'll give one or two seconds. And if I open here, they should appear the date again. I put hey start. Give uh, one or two seconds. If I open here, they already appear this data. But uh, I am not confused. Let's get a test. Inside this test, I open this notepad and put a uh, Sauber Lab. And I come here, I save it. And I keep one, two seconds until they finish to sync. Once that they finish to sync, I can come here and only put, remove Sauberlad and put a test, one, two, three. And I put test, one, two, three and save it. And I just realized that I shouldn't save in the top. So I come here back, versions, and I can restore the version. This one was the initial without any text. This one without, with uh, the Sauberlad. So I put here and put hey, hey store. They say, you are sure that you want to restore? Yes, I'm sure. All the problem that once that you restore, they will overwrite it. So if I open here, they still test. So if I open my file now, it's empty because I upload the empty one. And this is that is zero. So you have different revisions. Let's see what revision is this one. Hey scan, of course it will take one, two seconds. If it was directly in this server that I saved the revisions and access it, yes, but in this case, no. And here appears our lab, exactly the same file. So this way that the file system work. And in this way, you can have a few folders and those folders is connected for the users that want. In this case, I show how you can uh, do in uh, two Docker configurations, but uh, you're gonna have exactly the same kind of configuration if you decide to install in a Windows version. So guys, I hope that you like this video. Uh, remember, SyncFint is not a backup solution. It's only an option for you to synchronize data between two computers. You can have in your server, you can have in Windows, you can have in Linux and continue on. If you want to install in your computer, in your Windows, exactly the same procedure. You can only go there, install and configure the syncs, reconfigure different revisions, and that's it. If you like this video and think that it was interesting, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.